hollered out the window, good Lord, there's people dead in every bed. I took a picture in the mirror. She's looking back at me. We would get nauseous. He would really show you he wanted you out. My ghost story started when I entered the Velisca house where eight people were brutally axed to death. I am the owner. A lot of people are very drawn to the house just because of the history. It was kind of a dark side of Velisca. On June 10th, 1912, the entire Moore family, Sarah and JB, their four children, Boyd and Paul, Catherine, the only girl, Herman, the oldest, and two overnight guests, Lena and Ina Stellinger, were brutally killed on a Sunday night, found on a Monday morning. The killers waited until everybody went to sleep and then crept out and mutilated their faces with the ax. And to this day, we do not know who swung the ax. I've seen doors open up, you know, and, and that. But the scariest things that I've had is what little children do. They'll play with somebody that's not there. And that makes the hair stand up in the back of my head. And that was my real convincer that there was something in the house. People come from all over. The first year, we just had day tours. You know, we give them the history. We take them through the house. But then this group came and begged us to stay all night in the house. My friends and I went down to the Velisca house to spend the night there. We wanted to really get a feel for it. what happened that night. The murders took place. When we got there, we walked in, and then I was thinking, ooh, maybe we don't want to do this, because this is really creepy. They stayed a night in the house. I don't think I even charged them. There was no electricity. There was no running water. There was no bathroom. After Darwin left and we're walking around, it felt like you went back 100 years. It was just very spooky. <laughs> Evil it was permeating out of the walls. You could almost relive what they felt and the screaming that must have been going on, and no one heard it. The night of the murder, when the Moors arrived home, I'm sure the killers were in the attic adjacent to their bedroom behind the closet. The attic was very hard to walk into, just pure evilness. You get the goosebumps. We just backed out of it. The killers probably killed JB first. They killed him with a sharp edge of the ax. Sarah was hit with a blunt edge of the ax. Most of her blows were to the top of the head. I honestly think that Sarah still controls the house. It's a horrifying house. Very, very haunted and a lot of evil energy. This black shadow followed us in different parts of the house. In the pictures, you could see it. We realized it was the murderer. He had a very hateful energy. When I went into the master bedroom, Josiah and Sarah Moore were there. Sarah Moore actually touched my arm. We got a picture of a mist sitting in a chair. So we actually think that was Mrs. Moore because we were talking to her. I took another picture and we were shocked. Sarah Moore is in the mirror looking back at me. In the Moore children's bedroom, there was no rhyme nor reason to the ax marks in the ceiling. And this tells me that the children were up and around. In the children's room, there's a closet door there. If you ask, a lot of times on command, Herman will open the door. They will use whatever they can if they want to make an appearance. We were able to capture some amazing lights on film. You just know what that energy is, because it was very, very strong. You can feel it's there. My friend Barbara is a school teacher, so I asked Barbara, let's pick one of the children's books and read to them. When we were reading the story, you could feel the energy changing, and you could feel the excitement of these children. And then this black shadow followed us into the children's room. You could see it. 
Barbara started getting very nauseous and getting a headache. The murderer wanted her to stop. He did not want any happiness. On my recorder, this little boy said, don't go. That was very sad that he was actually there and enjoying this, and the murderer had to stop it. The two Stillinger girls were staying downstairs. They were just in the wrong place at the wrong time. The killers went downstairs. By this time, the Stillingers, one of them, had gone into the little closet. Lena put up an arm and warded off a blow. They pulled Ina out of the closet and killed her. Darwin had told us that when the ax was going up and down, it was leaving holes in the ceiling. To make doubly sure they were all dead, they laid them all in straight in bed, covered their faces with cloth. They mutilated their faces with the ax. As I guess they just didn't want to see the terrible thing that they'd done. Blood had dripped down through one of the vents from the children's room onto the living room floor. With a black light, you could see some of the blood stains on the floor. And there was a handprint in the blue room where one of the little girls was trying to get out. When they got through with the killings, they wiped the ax handle and then leaned the ax against the wall in the blue room. And to this day, we do not know who wiped the ax or who swung the ax. The authorities at that time did think that there were two men in the house. What we've gotten from some of the tape recordings I've gotten, the girls said two of them. I asked, did you know who did this? One of the girls answered, no. And then I said, how many were there? And she said, two of them. We were shocked. For her to actually verify that made it more creepy. I would never go into that house alone. The tragedy did not end that night, and several people afterwards were very affected by it. It's an unsolved mystery of who committed the murders. The Moore family is still trying to tell us, look, this is who did it. Why did I buy the house? You know, why drew me to the house? I'm not really sure. I get scared. There's times that I just feel that I should leave. Like I'm in amongst where I don't belong.